welcome back today we will discuss what basically signaling is when we are dealing with a telecommunication switching system after completing control of switching systems inside an exchange so let us deal with what basically signaling is about so in any communication system or any telephone system we have to initiate a call and also we need to maintain a call and we need to disconnect a call so these are the three basic operations a telecommunication system or a communication system that basically performs it it is going to establish a call it is going to maintain the call and it is going to disconnect a call these three activities will be performed with the help of signaling so these three activities which are the major activities a communication system involves with so these activities are performed with the help of signaling if signaling is fine all these activities can be processed by a exchange with very easy manner so in a telecommunication network signaling systems are as essential as switching systems as well as as essential as transmission systems so if you are dealing with a telecommunication network basically we have to deal with three different components that is signaling systems and switching systems and the other one is transmission systems so with the help of all these three systems we are going to build a suitable telecommunication network so when we are dealing with a multi link connection so multi link implies from end user to the exchange and also when we want to establish a connection from calling person to the called person so what we do is we establish a link from calling person to the called person the established link is not a single link but it is of multi link so from calling person to exchange and then from exchange to called person so this is how links are established so when we are dealing with multi link connection it is very important to send signals in both directions of course it is necessary to send signals either in this direction as well as in the opposite direction so both direction that is forward and backward is required between the caller and the originating exchange of course between the caller and the originating exchange call has to go or information exchange must go on both direction and also between the called customer and the terminating exchange so between the called customer and the called customer is directly connected to terminating exchange similarly the calling person is connected to originating exchange of course in between originating exchange and terminating exchange there exists few trunks or servers so between the caller and the originating exchange similarly between the called customer and the terminating exchange not only that between exchanges also we require two way communication we require messages or control signals to be sent in both directions so signaling system what we are going to deal with must be compatible with our switching system and the signaling system must be compatible with our transmission system so signaling system must be compatible with our switching system in order to transmit all signals that are required to operate switches so so control of switching systems is done by signaling similarly signaling system must be compatible with our transmission systems in order to reach the signals or in order to reach the exchanges also so the signals must be reaching the exchanges so that is made possible with the help of transmission systems of course signaling system should perform with in coordination with switching system as well as transmission systems a signaling system is going to produce signaling signal so the transmitted signaling signal may be either of two types either it can be a continuous signal or it can be pulse signal let us consider one example of a continuous signal 
and it is nothing but the DC of hook signal that is on a customer line. So that is whatever the link that is established or that is provided between end user and the exchange is nothing but a customer line. So generally a continuous signal will be sent when the telephone is in DC off hook condition. So DC off hook means once the customer takes his handset from the telephone. So the situation is said to be DC off hook. So DC off hook signal will be sent from the customer end to the exchange and whatever the signal that is sent it is going to be a continuous signal continuously a signal will be transmitted and again it will be coming back to the customer end it is going to be a continuous signal and we can have another type that is pulse signals so pulse signal may be either two types again it can be a single pulse or it can be a coded group of pulses so one example is a pulse signal is a decimal digit sent by loop or disconnect pulsing we already discussed what loop or disconnect pulsing is where we when we discuss dtmf pulsing dtmf pulsing so when we press any number inside a telephone so in in telephone keypad we will be having different numbers so when we press a particular number corresponding to that particular number some coding is done and certain number of pulses will be sent from the customer end to the exchange. So that is what pulse signal with respect to a decimal digit that is used in loop disconnect pulsing. Similarly, transmitted signals may be either unacknowledged signals or acknowledged signals. So basically an unacknowledged signal is a signal that is sent from the let us say a calling person is there and he is sending some address signal. He is sending some address signal to the exchange. So exchange receives the address signal and the exchange will not send any acknowledgement back to the calling person. So the exchange will process and that address signal will be forwarded. So such signals are whatever the signal address signal that is sent from calling person to the exchange. So such signals are said as unacknowledged signals. Similarly, if the exchange is giving replying back for the signal that it is receiving from the calling person, if it is giving some receipt or some acknowledgement in the form of acknowledgement signal, such signals are said as acknowledged signals. So whatever the signal that is sent from the calling person to the exchange and due to that the exchange is sending back. So whatever the signal that is sent here initially such signals are said as acknowledged signals. So generally address digits sent by customers are normally unacknowledged by our exchanges. When an acknowledgement signal is returned it confirms receipt of the signal that was sent so whatever the signal that was sent previously from the calling person to the exchange once the exchange sends back the acknowledgement so this calling person will receive this acknowledgement signal so this confirms whatever the signal the calling person has sent before is reach the exchange. So is what it confirms the receipt of the signal what we, that was sent before to the exchange or anything. In the early days, most inter-exchange circuits, whatever the trunks that are laid down between two exchanges, let us say exchange A and exchange B between these two exchanges will be laying down so many number of lines or trunks or servers. So whatever the circuits that we are used before are 
वन वे वर्किंग सर्क्यूट सो वन वे वर्किंग सर्क्यूट इंप्लाइज इन ओनली वन डायरेक्शन द सिग्नल विल बी सेंट सिमिलरली वी यूज सपरेट सर्क्यूट फॉर सेंडिंग सिग्नल फ्रॉम इन द ऑपोजिट डायरेक्शन on a route between exchanges a and b and also a separate group of circuits is used for calls from a to b and from b to a so certain group of circuits or trunks are used for sending signals or calls from a to b and another set of groups of trunks or circuits are used for sending signal from b to a so that is what the thing is that we were using before in the early days however it is observed that less number of circuits are required if traffic from a to b or from b to a is less or if those traffics were combined on a single group of trunks so what we can do is instead of laying separate circuits for signal transfer or call transfer from a to b and from b to a so what we can do is we will lay down a, a single group of trunks within that single group of trunks same trunk can be used for sending signal from a to b and after some time from b to a same trunk is utilized so by using this we require less number of circuits or we we require less number of trunks between exchanges so that is what we were able to combine on a single group of trunks we were able to combine the traffic between a and b and from b and a on a single group of trunks so with the help of this we can use less number of circuits between two trunks if the traffic from a to b is less or from b to a is less not only that both way working has therefore been used when circuits are long and expensive so we know if a separate group of circuits are required for one way direction and another way direction so when the distance between two exchanges is very long we require more or the system or the network is going to become expensive and also if the traffic level is not very high between a and b if the traffic between a and b is very less then we may use less number of trunks and within with the help of those trunks we can send bidirectional signals so both way signals can be transferred over those trunks so both way signaling systems are more complex when compared to one way signaling systems so in case of one way signaling systems separate circuits are required whereas in both way signaling systems more complexity is involved than that of one way working and in both way signaling systems we require identical operators on either side from a side as well as from b side we require identical operators because this operators is involved in receiving as well as transmitting so identical operators is needed in each end of the circuits so signaling is the method that is used by switching office that is exchange and the customer premise equipment so the customer premise equipment cpe includes telephones either fax etc so the signaling is used by exchange as well as telephones in order to control the switching of calls over the transmission facilities so in order to control switching of calls by the exchange 
we need to make use of signaling of course signaling calls must be sig calls must be transfer over transmission facility transmission facility includes wires radio whether it is wireless it is radio inside our PSTN network so it is public switch telephone network so for a PSTN network signaling is required not only at the exchange end but also at the transmitting end that is customer premise equipment CPE so this is required to send calls over transmission facility that is wires and let us classify different types of signaling so classification of signaling can be done as so basically signaling basically includes three types one first one is the internal signaling of an exchange so inside an exchange so from one side to another side from one processor to another processor we need to send control signals and we need to send some signaling so that is taken care by inside our exchange so that is what we call it as internal signaling similarly signaling is required between exchanges from one exchange to another exchange certain control signals must be exchanged so uh, that is what another type of signaling is and signaling is between an exchange and the subscriber so between the exchange and the end user we need to send control signals so all those things will be taken care by signaling so basically we are having three types inside the exchange between exchange and exchange to customer and of course on the other way we can classify signaling into or there are two types of signaling that one is first one is channel associated signaling and the other one is common channel signaling so in channel associated signaling as i said exchanges have sent control signals over the same circuits so with respect to channel associated signaling in channel associated signaling exchanges have sent control signals over the same circuit whatever the circuit that is used that is the what we call we can call it as channels same circuits are used for exchange of control signals and those same circuits are used for telephone calls also and telephone calls are also sent over the network over the same channels in case of channel associated signaling but in case of common channel signaling so we'll use separate channels or we will use separate circuits for transmission of control signals rather than using whatever the circuits used for calls so for a single telephone call the following basic signals are required between exchanges so right now we are dealing with signaling so whatever the basic signals or controlling signals that are required between exchanges let us look into it so initially we know call request or C signal will be sent from the calling person to the exchange that's why we write it as forward signal so that is also a type of signaling signal and also we will be dealing with address signal that is also sent from calling person to the exchange originating exchange that is what address signal is that is also a forward signal similarly answer signal so from the exchange answer signal will be received by the calling person so that is going to be a backward signal answer signal and we will be dealing with clear signals also of course clear can be forward clear or backward clear so we know that we know forward clear as well as backward clear so clear signal will be will be on both direction similarly this is also a signaling signal call request and address signal answer signal that is in the backward direction and clear signals so we know 
with the introduction of stored program controlled enabled customers to be provided with a large varieties of services and those varieties of wide range of services were not available with respect to electromechanical switching system so it is desired for a customer to be able to use these enhanced services right across the network instead of only on their own exchange so whatever the services provided by our spc exchange must be utilized over the entire telephone network that is pstn so instead of using only on their own exchange so so those services must be made available over the entire network instead of using only on their own exchange so that is what the concept is with respect to stored program control and that is made with the help of signaling so let us consider one example in which a customer is wishing to divert incoming call to another location and he should be able to make the diversion to any telephone in the network rather than only to telephones on the same exchange so one best example for this is if we have one customer in karnataka so whatever the calls that are arriving for this person must be diverted to another person or another telephone which is available in kerala so if we are able to provide such facility then that is fine but if we are able to provide facility only inside the kerala call forwarding facility only inside karnataka so that is not they accepted that is not accepted so those facilities must be available made available over the entire network over the entire telephone network so there is one best example with respect to spc exchange facilities provided for a customer so if you are providing such extra facilities then these services require more signals more control signals to be transmitted between exchanges than what was there previously that is traditionally been provided so because call has to reach this person and then the call need to be diverted over certain number of exchanges and it should reach the other person so when we are dealing with such calls diversion of calls so we need large number of control signals being exchanged between a certain number of exchanges so that is somewhat tds and of course that is made possible those facilities are made possible with the help of signaling since these signaling signals are generated by one central processor of inside an exchange so generally a central processor inside an exchange is going to generate signaling signals and these signals are sent to sent to the processor of another exchange so they can be transmitted directly between the processors of two exchanges over a separate data channel so what we can do is we can provide a separate data channel or a circuit for transmission of control signals or signaling signals and this is what known as common channel signaling ccs common channel signaling basically deals with a separate channel being used for transmission of control signals to establish connection between one exchange to another exchange so this common channel signaling is now widely used in public telecommunication networks so generally this is somewhat better when compared to previous case compared to channel associated signaling so inside the same channel or over the same channels which are used for call transfer same channels are used for transmitting 
control signals in such case we may observe some certain amount of delay but in case of common channel signals a separate circuits are used for transmitting control signals so between for information exchange between two exchanges or between two processors of two exchanges so fast data transfer takes place because separate circuit is high speed network is used so this is what common channel signaling is so generally nowadays see common channel signaling is being used in all pstn networks of course both nationally as well as internationally so it is also used in private networks also ccs common channel signaling is also used in private networks for signaling between digital private branch exchanges so when we are dealing with signaling between digital private branch exchanges so we used to use common channel signaling only where a separate dedicated circuits are used for sending control signals